And we are live, man. I got Mr. Aaron Browning. Brother, welcome to the show. How are you, man? Doing well, man. Thanks for having me, man. I love what, you, uh, what you've what you been building over here. I, I watch every uh, every video you put out, man. Good stuff. I appreciate it. I, I, I absolutely love doing this. I had no idea that it would turn into to, to what it has turned into in that um, – it is an opportunity for, for me to uh, meet incredible people like you and hear your story. But uh, I guess I never intended on um, other agents at EXP uh, being able to get to know their fellow agents. Uh, I had always intended that the show would allow someone like you to tell your story and that maybe someone from the outside would connect. And um, certainly that's happened. But it's been incredible to see also um, what's happened within the company. So, you know, that being said, man, let's uh, let's jump right in it. Uh, I don't spend a lot of time on, you know, on on on, you know, on how you got into real estate and all that stuff. But I will ask you just a couple questions just to kind of set the stage. Yeah. Um, so tell me, I mean, how long have you been doing it, man? I'm doing it about eight years. OK. So you've been doing it for eight years and, you know, before we talked here uh, or before we got on live here, I know you'd mentioned that you guys some are usually between 80 and 100 units and you're yep. about uh, 35 to 40 million. Yep. Pretty close. OK. And you are in the Virginia market. What area yeah. are you in there? Yes, we service Northern Virginia. That's our primary market, probably about 80 to 85 percent of our business. Um, and then we also service D.C. and then parts of Maryland as well. OK, cool, man. And, and so for you guys, what does your team look like right now? So we've completely um, expanded, blown it up since coming over here the last, uh, well, I guess we've been at EXP now about 13 months. Um, but the last three, three and a half months, we've completely grown. We were we were pretty lean. We were about three or four agents the whole time. Um, now mm -hmm. I think we're up to 15 or 16. Um, so I'm super excited to see what next year's numbers are going to look like for all of us. It should be a lot of fun. Wow. Did you say you're up to 15 or 16 people? Yeah, we've completely blown it up, man. We're attracting talent left and right, um, largely in part to, to EXP and what we offer. Um, but it's it's been a lot of fun, man. Yeah, we're 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 trying to bring on new people every day that we want to get in business with. That's awesome, man. And where were you guys at before you came over to EXP? I was at Keller Williams, man. That's where I started. Uh, I was there for for all all eight of my of my previous years. Um, Love my time there. I was in the ALC actually all eight years. Um, one of the OPs at, at one of the market centers. Believed in me early on when I had zero production and invited me on, um, which I know I wasn't supposed to be, but it was a lot of fun, man. I, I, I love, love what they're doing over there. Yep. And, and you know what the funny thing is, is, is um, all of us who were at Keller Williams, for the most part, have great stories from our yeah. time there. And no one's ever said anything bad about Keller Williams. And quite honestly, I don't think, I don't see uh, any reason why anyone would, because I think that Keller Williams is a great company. They have a great model. Um, you know, for people like us, it's just, you know, that we found something better and that's fine, man. You know what I mean? It's like there, there's no there's no love lost. I would assume that that's the way it is for you as well. 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I mean, truth be told, I, I thought I'd never leave. Um, I, I've heard uh, I've heard Jay Kender say it all the time. Once you see it, you cannot see it. Um, and that, that's what happened to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's true, man. That's absolutely true. So tell me, I mean, obviously, you were there for a long time. Me, I was there for about three years before yeah. we decided to leave. But you were there for eight years and you didn't know anything different, man. So talk about that. I mean, talk about talk about like when you first heard about EXP. Let's go through this entire story. Talk about when you first heard about EXP and and then talk about kind of your journey through making the decision to transition. Yeah, really good question. Um, my journey was really similar to, to Shelly Johnson, who's also with, uh, with EXP down in uh, North Carolina. I think she's part of AJ's group. Um, about a year ago, I think it was last July, my family was on vacation. I, I had to stay behind because we were working, trying to build this. Um, I had added up all of our caps and, and what our team was pay paying to our market center, that sort of thing. Um, talking about low level leadership is, I, is I, I knew we were paying a lot of money, but I never put the whole sum together. Um, right. For us, it was over 100,000. And I was like, oh my goodness. I was like, I love where I'm at. I just don't know if I'm in love with them. Um, mm -hmm. So it kind of it started that dialogue. Um, I remember reaching out to a couple of my mentors who were not EXP, and I was like, "Man, maybe I maybe I go private. I, I go build my own, do my own thing." They all advised against it. Hey, it's going to derail everything you're building. You know, it's just it's just not worth it. One of them said, "Hey, I, I hear a lot of buzz about EXP. Go check it out." I was like, "Yeah, cool. Give me 48 hours. Let me see what I can do." Literally, it was one of those blink moments, man, where I saw a video and I was like, "I cannot believe something like this is out there," and I had no idea. Um, and, and I think it took less than a week time where we had literally planned everything and moved on out. 
Wow, dude. Okay, so you made your decision really quick. Now, let me ask you this. Like, what were you – so, obviously, you started you, – you really – you became less of an agent, obviously, and more of a business owner, right? When you're making decisions like how much money's going out, how much money's coming in, um, those are more. It's not that you're not. It's not that you're 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 looking at your business as a business, and and not so much as you know. Um, when am I going to sell my you know my next house? It's like what are the logistical things that are going on inside of my business? And obviously, that's a huge one. How much we're paying into our brokerage versus the value we're getting back. So talk about like when you did the numbers and you figured out that you were paying all this money out and then you found out about EXP and their model, how did you, and I think you said you were at four or five at that time, how did you approach your your folks? Yeah, so really good question, almost a two-parter there. Um, so so when I when I when we identified EXP, the other piece that really helped solidify it for us, I, I felt stuck with my previous brokerage and I think it's true of most brokerages, where it was all about the team owner. Like, like as we sold more, did more, I got invited to more little private masterminds, more little groups. Um, and I was really struggling for our people um, and, and, and all the awards, everything else, none of that happens without the rest of the team, right? So it was, it was one of these stuck moments for me and my wife. Um, and then like we wanted, we wanted to help build, was it a 401k, was it retirement? Like how do we help, help our people? Really expensive as a small business owner. Um, and that was the other portion of EXP that, that when I saw it, it just changed everything. Um, with the stock ownership and all that sort of stuff. For, for us, it was a, it was a no brainer. Um, once once my wife and I and our ops manager, Sam, made the decision that we were going to go, it, it, it was scary. Uh, it really was because we were moving the team over. We had lots of active listings and everything else. Um, it was one of those where I was confident that that our team was with us for our leadership and it wasn't the flag we flew. Still, there's always a little little drunk monkey on you saying maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe, yeah. you know, maybe they're more loyal to the brand. Um, we were going to go regardless. It, it was one of those where I was so passionate that even if they didn't want to go, I was going to rebuild. Um, I, I knew it was the vision. I knew it was something I had to do for my family and, and everyone else that wanted to build with us. Having said that, we uh, when I presented that everybody came, there was one agent that did not, and he was with us for two weeks. Um, I didn't have a huge relationship with that with that person at that time. But all, all of those agents, same thing, man. Once I presented it, once I showed them the outline of what we were going to do, what they could accomplish underneath this and the ownership they were going to get, in the company they worked so hard for, it was a no brainer for them and they all jumped on. Dude, I love that, man. Yeah. And you know, success through your people, that is, a, that is, um, that is true. Um, that, that is true servant leadership. I mean, you know, that's, that's what it's all about, man. At the highest level, it's like success through people. It's like, what's the old Zig Ziglar quote? You can, you can get what you want as long as you help enough other people get what they want. And, and that's living that at the highest level, man. So I'm curious, you probably built, this incredible relationship, right, with uh, your team leader, your your OP, right, because you've been there for eight years, and and I'm sure you've had some great relationships. Man, talk about when you when you guys decided to to, to move, like talk about like approaching those people and and how that conversation went. Whew, that's a good one, man. I haven't shared this one with very many people. Um, it, it it wasn't great, you know. My my story was similar to AJ's. He came a year before me, but but 13 months ago, I think we were 3,400 agents. Um, we, we were not on the radar like we are now. Um, we were not, I think AJ said it best. We weren't, we weren't competition. Um, I, I was very good friends with my team leader. I, I did go into her office and let her know. Um, it, it wasn't the greatest conversation, truth be told. Um, uh, I, it, it, it I want to try to keep it as high level as I can. Um, sure. but yeah, it wasn't, it, it wasn't a great convo, but like I said, I, I knew it was best for my family and my team and, and, and we went ahead and went, went, went on with it. Talk about like the emotions you went through when you had to actually go into the office and have that conversation. Was that a difficult conversation for you to have? <sighs> uh, that's a good question too. Um, on, on paper, I would have thought so. For us, the, the blink moment once I saw it, like I, I knew with 100% certainty this is what I had to do. Um, it made having that having that, uh, that tough, fierce conversation a lot easier. Um, yeah. I'm not saying I was looking forward to it by any stretch. I hate letting people down. Um, like I said, I was on the ALC and I know they were counting on me and all that sort of stuff. Um, but but I had to do it. it. It it was very very clear. Yeah, and you know for us kind of the same thing. It was um, we were and I'm not sure how much you know about my story. We were actually in the process of opening up our own market center. Wow. Um, and and it was like you know we had found a building. We a lot of a lot of the things that um, that you know we had approval from from the uh, KWRI. We were I mean we were literally we were moving forward and. 
And you know, this idea uh, or this model was presented to us and ultimately we had a decision to make too. And we didn't want to get too far down that rabbit hole before you know, we, we let them know that, um, cause that was the right thing to do because, you know, they needed to have a leadership group to move forward with. And, and then we needed to kind of go do what we were going to do. But, um, you know, our conversation obviously was a very difficult one too, even though we'd only been there three years, we built some great relationships. Um, I wish it had been handled a little bit different, um, because we were essentially told to get out, uh, like right away. Um, but you know, I guess at the end of the day, um, if, that's on them. That's not really on us. You know what I mean? We we were very forthright with our decision to move. And um, although it was a difficult one and, you know, I can tell you it was very challenging to have to move all of our listings. Uh, we had 15 agents at the time. Wow. Um, so, yeah, it was it was definitely a, a challenging moment. But I think the reality of it is when you have a challenging moment like that and you get to the other side of it, you realize um how lucky you really are to be able to be a part of something like we're a part of right now um, with what's going on at EXP. And you, you know, you, ob you obviously came over uh, a little bit before I did, cause we didn't come until February of this year. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious when you decided to move over to EXP and I asked AJ this yesterday too, um, with, with it not yeah. being, um, you know, quote unquote competition at that time, you, it's, it takes a different human being to make a decision like that. Uh, because for us, you know, we saw some of the top people in our industry coming over like, uh, uh, Jay Kender, Mike Reese, Al Stasek, um, uh, Dan Beer, Kyle Whistle. I mean, all these huge agents across the United States, Curtis Johnson, um, they were all coming over. So for us, it was like, okay, well, if all these sm really smart guys are doing it, uh, we this is something we probably ought to look into, right? And so, oh, so obviously we started looking into it and and then we saw what you did, but that wasn't necessarily happening when you moved over. I mean, obviously you, you'd seen that AJ moved over and, and you guys are connected, but talk about, was that a challenge for you at all? You know, it, it should have been. I don't. I don't know why it wasn't. Um, I, I I hate going back to the video and that conversation I had. Um, I, I I did do a little bit of research over that you know week period. I had some amazing conversations with uh, with Shelly Johnson and Gene Frederick. Um, I, I remember Gene hit me with an opportunity at the end of one of our calls. Um, he is amazing, by the way. Um, at the end of one of the calls, he, we were recapping. It's probably an hour, hour and a half long. He was like, "What was one of the best things I said today? Like, what, what was your big takeaway?" I had named a couple of things. You know, the stock, the rev share, the obvious. And he goes, no, you missed it. And I was like, okay, what was it? I guessed again, I missed it again. And he was like, it was that there's only 125 agents in your market. So yeah. for me, it was one of those where it, I, want, I want to be on the bleeding edge. I want to go build yeah. something. Um, I, 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 I idolized all the all the early Keller Williams adapters. Unfortunately, you and I, we just missed that, missed that boat coming 20 years later. Um, yeah. I want that same opportunity that they had for my family and my team. Yeah. And you just nailed it, man. And that that's exactly that wasn't like the number one reason why we came. But now looking back on it, it's like I'm so glad that we got in when we did. And, you know, we're still there's still so much opportunity at 15000 agents for people to join and really um, and really be a part of the foundational process for this company. Um, it's just it's it, you know, I, I say this probably every other show that I wake up every single day and i'm excited about you know what the day has to offer at exp because literally i mean you talk about 125 agents in your market how many agents i'm curious roughly are in your market just give me a throw out a rough number Fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand, and that you've got 125 and, and you're well, selling yeah. now we're up to close to 400 but yeah and 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 you know and you know now, especially that you have the best product. And what I mean by product is the best real estate model to present and share with with uh, people that uh, are, are already in your marketplace that you've built relationships with. Hands Dude, down. I mean, it's like getting into Amazon stock early, right? It's like having a good friend at Amazon, Amazon, and and somebody you know calling you up and saying, hey. I, there's this great company and in, in, in 10 years, you know, they're going to be worth a billion dollars, right? Or a trillion dollars. Yeah. And, you know, you're getting in and, and at just the right time. So for you guys, I mean, talk about like when you, when you told your team uh, and, and then you had buy-in from them, uh, you guys, I assume the decision was made pretty quickly. Were there any challenges um, as it relates to moving your listings over and, and calling your clients or anything like anything that you can share yeah. that might help someone uh, who's maybe thinking about making that transition? 
Yeah, uh, good question. So, so my previous brokers they, they were phenomenal on that. We we everything was transferred over. Um, they they kept the high road on, on on that part, and I applaud them for that. All of the people we brought over the same thing. I, I have zero um, zero complaints on that. They they did the right thing. Um, it, it, it's a little bit of work, but but any any great opportunity, right? You're, you're going to have to invest a little bit of work. Um, it was harder back then because the the onboarding was a little bit slower. They were just starting to grow. It's what I call speed bump. Um, now it's a lot easier. So all the teams we're onboarding, we're helping them with that process. Um, we have the systems and the tools built out to help with it. Um, but no, it wasn't bad. We did not lose a single client. Um, we, we told them we were making a move. We're, we're you know we're going we're we're going over here, and and we we shared what we were going to be able to do and how it was all virtual. And this is the you know the wave of the future. Um, everyone bought in. Um, I had so many you know sphere sphere of influence reach out, say congrats. This sounds amazing. Sounds cutting edge. I had three people on Facebook, non agents who were in my database. Um, just, just regular, regular people, right? Regular consumers who bought our stock 30 days after me coming because they were watching what I was posting on Facebook. That was a really cool moment where, where I see yeah. that it's not just agents who are getting it, man. It's everybody. And that's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. And so talk about like uh, now that you've moved, right. And people know where you're at and, you know, they can kind of see that, okay, it's maybe not that scary, right. They can see, you know, what the stock has done, right. It's probably maybe almost tripled since you came over uh, 13 months ago. Um, but talk about like, yeah, five times. Yeah, it's crazy. It, so talk about like the conversations you're having with agent and agents in your marketplace now about eXp. Yeah, the, the cool thing about that, man, I, I think my story is a little bit different. Um, almost right now, I think we're close to like 110 people, 105 people total in our, in our little group that we call our tribe. Yeah. Um, a lot of those have come from our people through attraction. Um, and if I say a lot, I mean, I, I think it's 90 plus percent if I had to put a, a number on it. Um, we, we are vocal. We're not we're not secret agents. We're out there sharing our story because we're passionate about what we're building over here. Um, but but agents in our market and really across the country, they're I think they're, they're frustrated. They're tired. They know there could be something better. And they're reaching out left and right to try to figure out what that you know, what, what's happening over here. You said something a few minutes ago, probably five minutes ago about how you wake up excited every day. That is a common thread between all EXP agents. I feel like I'm having fun again, uh, and, and that's super, super important. I don't think we spend enough time talking about that, but this just, it, it, it awoke something in all of us, and I, I love that that comes out every time we uh, we hook up and we start talking. Yeah, that, that is, um, it, it does seem to be a common thread with everyone that I talk to. It kind of, it is, I think it is for a lot of us who were going through, you know, the grind or the monotony of yeah. uh, being a real estate agent or a team leader. Um, it is just added this new fresh component that, you know, like I said, when you wake up every day, it's just, um, it's just exciting, man. So talk about like with these, with these agents that you're talking to um, uh, talk about like who is receiving this message Um the easiest, I guess. I mean, I, I think the obvious answer we know is like Keller Williams, but is that true for you? Yeah, yeah, I get this question a lot. I, I don't know if it's just because of, you know, profit share, rev share, you know, there. Um, I, I really don't, or, or if it's just because that's where I was my entire career and that's who I hung out with a lot, right? It could be, I think it's a combination of both. Um, we have attracted a lot of Keller Williams agents. I, I think, I think as a whole in our market, they tend to get it a little bit quicker. Um, mm -hmm. they, they tend to, you know, uh, seek and ask questions and all that sort of stuff. Um, but we're attracting really all, all brokerages. So, it, it, yeah. Yeah. Are you are you guys getting any pushback from from brokerages in your in your market? From like brokerage owners or or certain brokerages? Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. Um, yeah. We're. I, <laughs> um, who said this to me? It was either it was either Jane or Shelley early on. They said when you come over, especially being a pioneer early in your in your market, get get ready to have arrows. Um, you know, as I think one of the one of my, as my coach says, one of the one of the basic elements of humans is to, is to always be right. Um, and, and when there is the appearance of something better, which I believe we have at EXP, it, it, mm -hmm. it unfortunately implies that someone else is wrong. And that, that's the part I don't like about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's more than enough for all of us to go around. If, if people are happy where they're at, stay where you're at. If you, if you want to explore something else and you, you want to grow and you want to build wealth and all that, then, then, then we're, we're definitely an option for you. Yep. And, and so you, you said something too, when you were talking about, like you were talking about and one word that stands out is you were talking about uh, attracting agents, right? You have this 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 thing now where your your people are calling you or they're reaching out to you or your team members, right? They want to find out more about EXP. But how are you doing that, man? Yeah, well, it's telling your story. It's doing what you're doing right now. It's, it's getting on social media, making posts. Um, it's flying the flag and being proud of it. 
Um, it's also knowing and you know spending time and studying the model so that you can actually talk about it, uh, be articulate about it um, at a high level because I think that's really important. Um, but but I, like I said, I, I think I think people want to know what's going on, especially now the the buzz is coming. We we get text or Facebook messages. I mean, it, it has to be daily at this point. What's going on over there? Tell me it's not as good as as it appears to be. Um, that sort of dialogue. The the other thing I'll add to this: when I came over, I, I was fascinated with the RevShare. I really was. That was mm -hmm. not one of the leading dominoes for me, like at all. Um, and, and it's what I've kind of coined as the KW goggles, right? When I was yeah. at KW eight years, I think I had seven people in my downline. Um, mm -hmm. So so I, I I loved the idea of it. It wasn't a knock on it. I just I wasn't very good at it. If I would have been a team leader, I would have been laughed out of the building, right? Seven people yeah. in eight years is an absolute joke. Fast forward here, you know, thirteen months, a little bit over a hundred. I just I didn't think that was even possible. And that, that's one of those where it has nothing to do with, with me, you, or anyone else. I hate to say it. It's about yeah. the model, man. The yeah. model really is that good that people are drawn to it. And it's just it's just been a lot of fun. It has. And you know, one thing I'm I'm curious about is that, you know, you look at traditional brokerages like um, like a Cobalt Banker or a Berkshire Hathaway or you know, Century 21, right? And they have these. Um, they have these enormous splits. Um, some of them are indefinite splits. And then we know there is an indefinite royalty at, at these companies as well. It's like, do you, is, is there anything that, that you think that stands out to you in your conversations with agents from those brokerages uh, and why they're loyal or why they would want to stay and continue to pay that for you know, the rest of their real estate career? It's a deep question. Um, it's what you said in the very beginning. I, I think one of the biggest faults we have as agents as a whole is that we treat our, our businesses like, like, like we're just agents. We're not treating it like we're business owners. We're not asking those tough decisions, those tough, tough questions. Um, I had a great conversation with a, a big agent in our market the other day. He was going to go back to his broker and we were kind of mapping out that conversation. And I challenged him. I said, when you sit down with your broker, who, who we had a great relationship with, and I love that, I asked the broker, how do I make money at this office next month without me selling a single piece of real estate? Ooh, man. Back, let the answer come. Can you repeat that? Yeah. That's a how, great question. My broker, how, how do I make money in this office next month without me selling a single home? Wow. And then that's be powerful. Let, yeah. And I had a list of like four or five of these. And it was it was a really good convo, high, high level convo. He was so receptive to it. When he went back and had, had that broker convo, it was, I mean, it was clear, like he, they, they don't have an answer for that. And that, that's the flaw in that model. If you just want to be an agent, guys, I'm telling you, you can stay in a model like that and just, just keep doing it. If you want something bigger and you want to treat this like a business, you need to ask yourself tough business related questions. Yep. And, 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 you know, for us too, it's like, uh, I think, you know, there are, we call it, I mean, there's the early adopter, right? And, and yep. you were a really early adopter. I, I think people move uh, in different, I, Apple put out like a study a while back and I don't remember exactly what it talked about, but it talked about the people that, you know, uh, pre-order stuff, right. And they're in line waiting on their stuff. And then there's the people in the next phase, right. And then the next phase after that, and then there's people that are just kind of at the end there and, yeah. and, and, and buy in different fashions. But, you know, it, and I, it, I would imagine we're following something very similar. Do you think that, Ultimately, if you if we're looking ten years out from here, and 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 we're looking at who who still exists in the real estate game uh, as far as companies or companies that are at least viable uh, and, and profitable, who do you think is here and who do you think is gone? Wow, wow, um, that is a tough one. It, that's so <laughs> hard. That's so hard to answer. And here's why: what we're doing over here is causing is causing you know let's talk about Keller for a second, causing them to change their model. Mm -hmm. which is crazy to me. If you would have asked me 13 months ago, would this have ever happened? I would have said, no way. I mean, they're, they're, they're the big guy on campus, right? Like there's no way they're going to change, especially with a company with 14 or 15,000 agents. Like, why would they do that? So I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if other companies are going to, are going to start shifting more, more towards agent centric models like we have here. Um, we don't know what the market's going to do. I mean, I, you know what I mean? Yeah. They completely shift and then we're all in trouble. Like who knows? Yeah. What, what so are your do you thoughts on that question? I mean, I honestly think it's on some level um, that humanity will win. And what I mean by that is like, I, I talked to AJ a little bit about this. Um, I think that especially the millennial crowd um, who are more prone to um, do research because they have access and they're so um, 
they're, they're, they've grown up on computers. I mean, for the most part, they, they've lived in a microwave society and they can retrieve information at you know, the touch of a button. Yep. And I think that um, I think that the more millennials that come into the real estate marketplace and want to be real estate agents, um, I, I think that this model and maybe K, KWs to some extent are set up for th that wave of, of individuals to come into to this particular career. Yeah. So I think as that as we start going through some of that, that then you see a transition, um, you see a transition from maybe some of like the average agent in our market site, it's a, I think it's like a 57 year old female, right? And, and so that's, you know, it's not old by any stretch of the imagination, but it's certainly not, you know, 33 or, or 25 or anything like that. But what that tells me is there, there's this big chasm, right, between um, e either the millennial generation and, um, you know, that 57 year old agent uh, that when when those people, when they retire or get out of the business, that this, there's this huge void that needs to be filled. Right. And the only people left over to fill that void uh, are the millennial crowd and the millennial crowd, like I said before, is very well versed in technology and the people that are more um, up to date and like the EXPs of the world, the KWs of the world, the people that are uh, on top of the game as it relates to technology are going to they're going to put out the welcome mat uh, for that for that crowd. You know what I mean? And they're I mean, I don't know about you, but in, in our business, like we have this idea of the prototypical agent, right? Um, and who we want to recruit. Um, and so for us, like we're constantly looking for that, uh, that guy or gal, right? And, and so what I'm saying is where I think this is going uh, over the next five, uh, but especially down the road into 10 years, is that, that these companies that don't provide a lot of value and, and, and they charge a lot of money, Man, I don't know how they can sustain. Like, I don't, I don't see how when all the all the information is out there, right? It's all at their fingertips, and they can do all the research. I don't know how anyone picks that over this. If that makes sense, I, I would agree, man. That's a really, really good point. And and so it'll be interesting. Like, I I think that we're glad to be in now because we're we're like you. We are, you know, we're kind of laying the foundation in our area. But I think ultimately, at the end of the day, it's not about me and it's not about you. It's ultimately about them. And you and I know this right now. And the people that have moved over to EXP, we know that that it is a better model, not because we say it is. It's a better model because that it, it, everything that we have available to us is available to us, the agent, and it's it's for the agent. It's not it's not pro broker or pro brokerage, right? It's everything that we're getting right now is for us. And let's at the end of the day, who's doing all the deals? You know what I mean? It's not the broker. The broker's not doing any deals. The myth of of you can put a coal banker on your sign and people are just going to flock to you, dude. That died like forty years ago, man. That's just people not. Still, people still hold on to that belief, though. It's it amazes me. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're right to some extent. Well, no, I don't think the flag matters at all. I, I really don't. Um, I think it's a big mistake. It goes back to what I said earlier. If you're running this like an agent where you're only branding your brokerage, that's a big mistake. It's about you and your brand. Um, and that means something I think Keller and, and we do insanely well. Um, but the other one, I just don't get it, man. Brand yourself. This is about you and your relationships and your your service that you do. It's uh, I mean, very little about the brand. Yep. And and. I mean, that that just to me, I saw a Facebook post. Um, I think it was yesterday or the day before. And it was like it was like it was an agent. And they were saying, you know, come get your pumpkin at Colwell Banker. Right. And it's yeah. like it's not like it's like Colwell Banker's giving out these pumpkins. And, the, oh, and I'm man. like, man, the, the guy, the, the owner at Colwell Banker, man, he's like, oh, man, this is great. You know what I mean? I've got, I've got all these agents out there and they're just pumping Colwell Banker. And the reality of it is, if, if that agent went back and asked, you know, however many houses that they had sold, you know, in the previous 12 months, yeah. um, who they did business with, dude, probably half of them wouldn't even be able to tell you what brokerage you worked at. You know what I mean? I totally agree. Totally agree. So let me digress, man, because I get off on a little bit of a tangent. Um, but, you know, for so for your group now, obviously, 13 months in, you guys, I mean, you're just, you're, you have this incredible momentum. You have over 100 and, what did you say, 170-something people in your revenue share group? Or, or no, something. we're between like 105, 110. 
100, 510. Okay, 100, 510 people in your revenue share group. You're getting all this momentum right in your marketplace. You went from 125 agents that when you started, now you have over 400 agents. And you know, where does this where does this ship going for you, man? I, you know, it's so so. Our three year goal was to hit 100 in the in the group, and we did it in 13 months. I made a post about this, uh, I think, a week or two ago. Um, I way underestimated how fast this was going to go and, and how quickly people were going to see it, like way underestimated. Um, everyone's telling you know, tell me once you hit 100, it's very, very easy to double and triple this. Um, and, and now, as you said, man, like kind of when you came over in February, when these when these giant agents are coming over, moving massive businesses, by the way, and that is tough. They're moving it overnight. It, it, it shows, man. I've heard Kendra say, too, when the big agents come, real estate is a popularity game. All the other agents want to come, too. They, they want to know what the top dog is doing. Um, and once you get that momentum, plus behind a really good model that, like I said, I think it's the best in the country, um, it's it's game over. Game over. Yep. Yep. And and uh, so you're like, what is your goal for like revenue share for like um, like the next, let's let's just say the next five years? Like where do you, where are you looking to take this thing? Like I, I want to get to a thousand. Okay. Want to do a thousand in the next five years? A thousand, correct. That's awesome. And then you, you want to travel to the United you States. A year ago, I would have laughed at you, man. <laughs> You'll probably do that in two years. Yeah. I'll receive <laughs> yeah, it. And then you want to you want to get a you want to get a, an RV and travel to the United States. Yeah, like really. Agent, right? Talk about a guy living on purpose, man. Amazing <laughs> That's, story. That was an awesome interview. And, and if if you guys didn't uh, listen to that or see that yesterday, uh, look up AJ Midas show. Yeah. Um, so talk about like um, the, the question I like to ask everybody kind of like as we wrap things up here is like, so, you know, th to that agent uh, listening to us or that broker listening to us right now, who's maybe um, exploring uh, uh, maybe change uh, and they're looking at EXP as an option uh, or they're just doing their homework. Like what, what do you Aaron Browning say to that person? Um, good question, man. So, so, Almost every agent we've brought over, and this isn't talked about a lot either, was very happy where they were. I, I, I think as people on the outside, they're, they're viewing it as something happened at the previous brokerage. That's why they wanted to jump ship and kind of move. That's not it. People are seeing the opportunity and, and they're running to it. They're embracing it. So I, like I said, I, I think we really got to drive that point home. Almost every agent we brought over was very, very happy. They had no intent of leaving, much like you and I. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense, man. Are you, are you kind of seeing the same thing in your attraction and what you guys are doing? Yeah, and and so that's I I I want I want to make that crystal clear in that Wait. you owe it to yourself to at least find out what's going on. It doesn't just because you listen to a video or do research on a company, it doesn't mean you're making a change. What it does mean though is that you have the you have the 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 need to and you should want to do this. You should want to know what's going, what other companies are doing, what's going on outside of your local marketplace even, right? Because we have a tendency just to get our blinders on and, you know, we're, we only see what's going on in our office when in reality, all these other changes are taking place all around us. So you owe it to yourself. And it doesn't mean that you're necessarily being disloyal to your, your brokerage, but you owe it to yourself to find out what's going on. Would you agree? You're, you're a business owner. Why would you not want to know what, what the next door neighbor is doing? Why would you not want to know what the competitor is doing? Even if even if you're completely closed minded, you know, you're not going to go or do anything else. I still want to know what someone else is doing. Like you have to. You got to be able to talk about that um, when you're competing against that. You want to be able to know more about it. Um, I will say even people that come in to, to a, a presentation or a meeting with us or watch a video with that closed minded um, mindset, once they see it, you can't unsee it. I love it. Love it, man. I say it, man. I steal it from Kendra. It, it is so true. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's true. Yeah, it is very true. So, brother, um, how can people connect with you if they have questions um, about growing a real estate team or um, questions about joining EXP? Yeah, yeah. So you guys can add me on Facebook. Obviously, my name's here. You can send me an email, Aaron at Browning Homes Plural Group dot com. Um, also on Instagram, Aaron J. Browning. And then I'll, I'll throw my cell phone number out as well. Send me a text or anything. 703-296-7541. Happy to answer any and all questions. You want to explore an opportunity, let us know. Awesome, man. Hey, brother, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day. I know you're a busy dude. Um, I so look forward to uh, to bumping into you down in uh, New Orleans uh, and seeing you at EXPCon. Yeah, man, I appreciate the opportunity, man. Keep doing what you're doing. The uh, The agents love it. All right, brother. Cool, man. See you in a couple we'll weeks. Talk soon. All right, bye.